Today we're going to talk about loops inside Unity scripting. And loops is something you'll find in every single programming language out there pretty much. It's a way for us to repeat code again and again and again until a certain condition has been met. Now there is four different types of loops to talk about, but one of them includes having to know about what an array is. So we're not going to talk about that one today since we haven't talked about arrays yet. But once we get to the array episode, some further ahead in the lessons. Uh, I'll try and see if I can remember that we haven't done the array loop yet, which is called the for each loop. You can try and look it up if you want to after this video. I just don't think it's a good idea to talk about it now since we haven't talked about arrays yet, but we will talk about three other types of loops. So with that said, uh, just to sort of get us started, I want to do an actual example to demonstrate what exactly a loop does. This is something that I don't think a lot of other people do. I think to just sort of like show you what a loop is and then they console lock stuff into the console. I want to actually show you stuff kind of using what we learned in the previous episode by producing stuff inside our scene. So what we're gonna do to start with is I'm just gonna go ahead and go inside my hierarchy. I'm gonna right click and I'm going to create a 2D sprite. This is just going to be a circle and I'm just gonna go ahead and call this one item and make sure to reset the transformation by right clicking and then reset. I'm also gonna go ahead and change the color of my circle to something like red, just so we know exactly that this is a circle and we can clearly see it's a circle and it's right there. What I'm also gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I have a prefabs folder created inside my assets folder. I talked briefly about prefabs in the previous episode. Essentially, we can create game objects inside our hierarchy and we can apply different components to them and then save that object inside our assets folder so we can duplicate it later on with all the components and everything attached to it. So all the different settings you save on the object is going to be on that object inside your assets folder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag and drop it inside my prefabs folder. And I'm also gonna go and just sort of delete it from my hierarchy here because now we have it inside our game folder. So we don't need to have it inside the scene. So I'm just delete it from the hierarchy. And as you can see, it's still inside my, my assets folder down here inside the prefabs folder. So with this, I'm going to create one more thing. Inside my hierarchy, I'm going to right click, create a empty game object, which is basically just a game object that has nothing besides a transform. And I'm just gonna go and call this one game manager. Now the game manager here is going to be a game object inside the hierarchy that just simply takes care of the um, the general things. It manages the general things inside your game. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of reset it. Not that we need to, but it just, I get triggered seeing that it's not reset. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go inside my scripts folder. And you'll actually notice that I already created a script. I just simply called it something like test scripts. And I'm going to take that script and drag it into my game manager. Now, the reason that we need to create this game manager here is because when we want the script code to actually work inside our scene, it needs to be attached to something inside the scene. So I'm creating a empty object called a game manager that has no other purpose than having this script attached to it for the moment. And this allows for me to actually run the code inside the script when I click play. That's essentially all it does. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open up my scripts and just sort of show you what I have so far. The reason that we created a prefab, which is just a red circle, just a, a random game object for, for our game is because I want to take that game object or the prefab and inside my code, I'm going to assign the game object to a field. And then I'm just sort of gonna instantiate the game object whenever I run the loops inside my code. So we're simply just gonna spit out a bunch of game objects just to show that we can do something inside the scene when we run a loop statement inside our code. We did talk briefly about how to instantiate in the previous episode, but just to like, briefly explain it again. Instantiate is a built-in function or built-in method inside Unity that allow for us to instantiate, which means that we're going to create something using this statement down here. In this case here, I'm telling it in the first parameter that I want to create a game object, which is going to be the prefab that we just created. The second parameter is going to be where inside the scene I want to spawn in this prefab, just sort of copy the code that I have here. Essentially, I created a new vector two, which a, ve <laughs> a vector, <laughs> a vector is just simply the X, Y, and Z axis. But because we're talking about a vector two and not a vector three, we're just talking about the X and Y axis. So I'm telling it where on the 
x-axis and the y-axis we want to spawn in the object. And inside the parentheses of that vector two, which is right here, you can see that I created a random range, which is a built-in C-sharp uh, method that simply allow for us to create a random number between two numbers. We did that in the last episode too. So in this case here, in the x-axis, I'm creating a random number between 6.5 and minus 6.5, which is two float numbers. As well as on the y-axis over here, I did the same thing, but with 3.5 and minus 3.5. So essentially, we're just doing a random place inside my camera view, essentially. Now, how did I know that these two are the numbers that we need to use? I just simply went into Unity and I, you know, if we take the circle, the prefab, put it into our scene, I just simply dragged it up and said, oh, okay, this is 3.5 and this is 6.5. There, roughly. So if you create a number that is larger than this, it's going to be outside the scene and we don't want that to happen. So that's just essentially how I did that. The last parameter inside my instantiate here is a quaternion dot identity, which just basically means that we're going to have this object rotated to match the scene inside our game. So with that saved, I'm just gonna go ahead and go back inside Unity because remember, we have a serialized field for a game object that we haven't placed yet. So inside my game manager, if I take a look at my script here, you can see that, oh, we have a field with no game object inside of. And that's because we have this field at the top here that just simply says we have a item that needs to be, you know, a game object, but we haven't actually filled it out yet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag my prefab up there and assign it. So now we're going to spawn in the prefab whenever we call upon this method down here. Now, spawn item is my method, one that I created in here. This is not a built-in method inside Unity. So just in case you wondered, since we started talking about this code, this is my own method. As you probably mentioned that at the beginning, this is a method that I made uh, that we can just simply call upon. And once we call upon it, for example, I could go inside my start method here and just call upon the method, save it, go inside Unity. And now you'll notice that when I click play, it's going to spawn an object inside my scene here. So now it's just gonna spawn one object, but what if I want more? I want more than just one. What I can do is I can create a loop that is going to duplicate my code again and again and again until a certain condition has been met. So inside my code here, inside the start method, I'm just gonna go and delete spawn item, and I'm going to create the first of the three loops that we're gonna talk about. The first one is going to be one called a while loop. And a while loop essentially just looks like this. We say while, which is the statement we use, parentheses, curly brackets. And inside the parentheses, we're going to create a statement, a condition that has to be met. And while that condition is true, it is going to keep running the code inside the curly brackets again and again and again until the condition is no longer true. And this is a very good moment to talk about infinite loops because we do not want to have infinite loops inside our code because if I were to create a condition, let's say I did something like, let's say I just said true inside this while loop, which is basically a Boolean that is always gonna be true. This is going to run infinitely inside my code and that could end up crashing things. It could end up hawking up a lot of performance. You don't want to have infinite loops. Make sure you always have some way to stop the loop from running once you create a loop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say at the very top here, before we get to the loop, I'm going to create a variable. And yes, we actually call it a variable this time around because we're inside a method inside our class. And once you create a container inside a method, we call it a variable. And we don't use the, the underscore like we usually do with private fields that we have over the top there. So just a little bit of uh, syntax for you. So I'm going to create a integer variable and this one is going to be called item count. And I'm going to set this one equal to five. And I'm just simply gonna close it off here. So I'm gonna use item count and I'm going to say while item count is greater than zero, run this code inside this while loop. So I can actually take my spawn item, paste it inside the while loop. And what this is basically going to do is it's going to spawn item infinitely right now because we, we haven't stopped the while loop yet. This is going to be true infinitely. So what I want to do is I want to take item count 
go below here and I'm going to say minus minus. Minus minus is simply going to subtract one from this number here. So item count is going to be four next time. And then once it loops again, it's going to be three and then it loops again, and then it's going to be two, and just continues to get smaller and smaller and smaller until item count is no longer uh, zero or below that. Uh, we could also say plus plus, which would add one instead, but that would just simply continue making this an infinite loop. This would just keep counting upwards, which means that this is always going to be true. So we do want to have this as a minus minus, just so we make sure that the conditions at some point becomes false. So with this, this should actually spit up five objects inside my Unity. So if we were to go back inside, it should call upon the method five times, like so. So now we have five objects inside Unity. We just simply spawned them in. Now you might be asking, well, okay, so the practical sense of using a while loop, just to give one example here, is to, for example, if I have a map inside my game and I need to spawn in random enemies at random locations, I can use a while loop to indicate how many enemies do I want to spawn in. So what I could do is I could say, well, okay, uh, item count is right now five, but that's too few enemies. The, the player keeps killing them way too fast and it's not hard enough. So I'm gonna increase the count to eight. So eight enemies should be a little bit harder for the, the player to kill. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and run the game again, and then it's going to be eight enemies this time around. So you can use this to sort of like indicate how many things you want to spawn in. Again, just one example of how you can use a while loop. Now, the next one we're gonna talk about is something called a do while loop. And a do while loop is a little bit different than a while loop because a while loop, if it were to actually say that item count is zero, this while loop would never run a single time because this condition is going to be false from the start. So if we were to save this, go inside my Unity and actually run the Unity code, or the, <laughs> the Unity program, uh, you can see that we don't spawn in anything because this condition is going to be false from the start. So there's no reason to run it. Now a do while loop will always run the condition or the, the actual code block one time as a minimum. So the way we create a do while loop is instead of running the block of code inside the while loop here, I'm just simply gonna copy it and instead I'm going to say we want to close off our while statement up here right after the while statement. It's very important you have this semicolon. And then above the while statement, I'm going to say do and then paste in the block of code that we just removed. So essentially it is going to do this block of code at least once and then it's gonna check for this condition down here. So even if this is false, it should spawn in an object at least one time, because remember, we set the item count to zero, which means that this statement down here is false from the start, but because it's going to run the code at least once, we should get at least one object spawned into our scene here. So as you can see, it runs the code and it just stops uh, continuing running the, the, the while statement down here. Uh, we could also increase this to five, which means that now the while statement is true, so it should spawn in more than just one object. So we're gonna start the, the Unity program here. And as you can see, we get five objects again, because it will at least run the first statement once and then continue if the statement continues to be true. I saved the best for last, because we're going to be doing something called a for loop and a for loop is probably what people have the hardest time remembering. I think it has something to do with the fact that a for loop has fixed parameters inside the parentheses instead of a while loop, which actually looks very similar to an if statement. So people just has an easier time remembering the, the while loop instead of the for loop. So the for loop here is a loop that we can create. So we're gonna say for parentheses, curly brackets. Inside the parentheses, we're gonna have three different parameters that is going to just handle this entire loop statement. Uh, the first one is going to be, where do you want this loop to start from? And we could essentially use this number up here, but let's go ahead and comment that out for now because I just wanna show you how it's typically shown when you teach this sort of thing. Um, so the first one is going to be a integer data type, and we're gonna call this one i. So this is a i variable. And I think the reason that we call it I, which is kind of a tradition when it comes to for loops is because it stands for iteration. Don't quote me on that, I'm not entirely sure. And we're gonna go ahead and set this one equal to five. So we could essentially, if we wanted to, just copy the item count and paste it in down here. Uh, for now, let's just keep it simple. 
We're going to set equal to five. We're going to say semicolon afterwards. And then we're going to jump to the next parameter, which is going to be what do we want to do in terms of checking for when it needs to stop looping. So what I can do here is I can say, well, as long as I is greater than zero, in this case here, then I want this to run. And then the last parameter is going to be what do we want to increment or decrement this with each time we loop through the block of code. So in this case here, just like with the while loop, I want to take my I statement and I want to say minus minus, which means that we're going to decrease by one each time we loop through this statement here. So we start with five and we're telling it to decrease by one after each loop. And when we hit a number that is equal to zero or less than zero, it is going to stop looping. That's essentially what we're writing here. So what I can do is I can call upon spawn item, paste it in here, and just simply go inside my Unity editor. I'm going to press play, and then you can see we get five objects inside our scene here again. And that's because we're running this for loop five times because that's what we told it to. We could also, just to show it again, take item count, and just set it equal to item count here instead. This would do the exact same thing because item count is equal to five. So I can go inside my inspector or inside my, my Unity, play this again, and then you can see we get five again once it actually plays. So this is how we can do loops inside our code. And this is three different examples. Like I said, we do have four. Uh, therefore, each loop is something that I'm not going to teach you today. It is something that requires us talking about arrays, which is a little bit further down the line. But let's just go ahead and save it for that tutorial later on. And just sort of like keep in mind that we have these loops and we do use them frequently, just like with anything else that I've taught you in these lessons here. So for now, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.